Hey, welcome to Actual Spinster. My name is Anna Marie and today I'm just going to do a quick, hopefully, February wrap up. I read four books in February. Yeah, I think it was pretty successful because I finally finished one book I had been reading since November <laughs> and also another book. I've, I've read another book that I have been meaning to read for a while so we'll start with that one because that's the first thing I finished. So this is A City Girl uh, by Margaret Harkness. It's a Victorian novella and it's basically about a woman called Nellie and her experience in the east end of London in a uh, the 1880s I don't know it feels kind of like if I describe the plot like you know what happens but you always sort of know what happens I guess maybe except from one or two things but um basically you know she meets a, a middle class guy let's see how it's described on here so the novel says that she is seduced and abandoned by this middle class man called like Arthur or whatever it's also about the Salvation Army <laughs> which was like a big thing in the Victorian era especially in the later Victorian era like and I mean the Salvation Army sucked but they did also do a kind of like philanthropic Christian poverty work which I guess sometimes meant that they dealt with people in a more respectful way than some other things but it's also I don't know it, it, yeah I know that Margaret Harkness is quite interested in Salvation Army people because I think there's a figure in this called Captain Loeb I think that's how you say it who is also in other work of hers, which I will also probably read at some point. Yeah, it's like, it is pretty short, um, which is nice. <laughs> and yeah, like, I, I mean, it's very, I was reading this for the ending, but in the reading about it that I had done, I was like under the impression that the ending was much more of like a thing and there would be more, it wouldn't just end <laughs> with sort of like the slight hint of, the ending I was looking for so that sort of threw me off a bit but yeah I mean I wouldn't really especially recommend this unless you're particularly interested in I don't know Salvation Army and in how poor women are treated but at the same time like it's written by this like middle class woman who did like some research and she lived in like a building um estate basically that she then used in this but like you know it's not like it's not patronizing even if it is still kind of sympathetic at the at the very beginning it's kind of hinted that like nelly isn't the daughter of her mother she's the daughter of a, a, a lady and that's why her mother and her brother like don't like her and then like then this stuff happens to nelly and some of it is stuff that obviously is like morally wrong in terms of victorian sensibility and then but it feels very much like oh but she's so dignified and she's you know you know anyway it, i didn't really like that. i feel like i've already talked about this for ages mm, there's not really much to say it's like 120 pages <laughs> anyway okay the next thing i read was reaper man by terry pratchett it's the 11th in the Discworld series and it's the second in the Death series and this one is like Death goes missing because Death suddenly like like Death has his own death which obviously shouldn't be a thing that can happen because Death can't die but then apparently Death can and it's really cute like Death obviously like isn't a human but was created like imagined by humans and then like he loves humans so he creates like a sort of persona yeah like literally a persona um <laughs> and he helps out in a in a uh, farm and he's called Bildor or something <sighs> it's really cute <laughs> there is quite a lot of like wizards in it which like is less enjoyable but it's still fun and <laughs> yeah there was some cute like there's like a werewolf and also it's like a werewolf and then also a girl who turns into a wolf I don't know there's some like I can't really remember exactly what that means or like how it worked because like the idea is that they're like on oppositional like time frames and one of the wizards is like trying to match make them <laughs> anyway so yeah it's enjoyable and fun I liked it a lot have a crush on death like I have said actually I'm not sure if you all have seen the video where I say that but I have a crush on death then the next book I finished was Lost in Work by Amelia Horgan, or Lost in Work Escaping Capitalism. So this is the one that I was reading since November. So this is a non-fiction book and it's uh, in the, the Pluto Press like Outspoken series, just like the Feminism Interrupted series uh, by Lola Olufemi. And this one is specifically focusing on work, like what work is, uh, how capitalism works, and what ways are it, is it resisted, 
how work affects like the fabric of society slash what society even like is yeah and I thought it was really good um I think politically it's very right on which is great and but it's also able to um engage with uh like theoretical concepts and Marxism and and political theory economic theory without being really jargon hate heavy and also maintaining a clarity that is extremely useful it also sort of right at the beginning kind of does this thing that I think is really helpful because obviously like I do think that there has been like a rise in sort of anti-capitalism like a rise in like just being like well jobs suck my work sucks like there is no such thing as a dream career but that doesn't necessarily mean anything in 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 terms of fighting against capitalism like actively and you know just sort of saying anti-capitalist things isn't enough yeah so I would definitely recommend this and it is UK um focused and that was interesting because I definitely learned some stuff and I learned some stuff it was interesting because I was reading this during the UCU strike disputes I mean they're ongoing but like in the first two weeks before Joe Grady cancelled it I was reading this and reading some of the sections on trade unions and like the law around that and the maybe tensions in terms of what a union does or what it's, what it's trying to do uh, which was all very interesting to read and also to be sort of like looking at too. If you're looking for a non-fiction book about work or about Marxism or like as an intro into some like bigger like political theory heavyweight stuff this is definitely a great book um, for you. Especially because it's obvious that Amelia Horgan has done a lot of reading and like a lot of research, which we can all benefit from. So that's great. <laughs> yeah, and then the next book I read was, wait, are these all different? Like I read a classic, I read a fantasy book, I read a nonfiction book, and then this is like a kid's fantasy book. So, so yeah, this book I read is The Screaming Staircase by Jonathan Stroud, which is the first book in the Lockwood & Co series. So I watched the first three or so episodes of Lockwood & Co on Netflix and I really like the world. I really like the idea that like there hasn't been as much technological advancement because um, people are trying to fight ghosts. So decided to listen to the audiobook. It's also because, you know, like <laughs> children's books is like really where the reading is at for me, I think at the moment. So I read that uh, and I would say it was definitely better <laughs> definitely better than the Netflix show. Basically, if you haven't seen the show or read the books or anything, it's the series about um, a world where the problem has happened, which is that um, basically there are ghosts, like insistent ghosts <laughs> in the world now, and nobody knows quite why. And it ha it, when the books are, it happened about 50 years ago or something. And the people who can see ghosts, yeah, see and hear and like interact and are most affected by ghosts, are children. So basically all of these agency f agencies form where they train up kids to fight against ghosts and to get rid of ghosts in particular areas. So one of the reasons I wanted to read it was because I was like, wow, this like is so not kids liberation, it's kind of wild. And then I was like interested in thinking about like, obviously because I'm me, I was like, ooh, I wonder if there's like potential for like, you know, kids lib unionization, like wages for childhood or like, I don't know. Because I have also, also have been thinking about that a lot because I, I started writing something maybe a year, a year and a half ago or something about some kids liberation type stuff thinking about the work that children are forced into doing and within our society not just like this fantastical society but then this fantastical society kind of like really like verbalizes that like articulates it in the fact that like these children literally have to have jobs to keep society and other people safe so it's it's intense if you think about it from that level but um it's not as intense as i just made it that's just me bringing the intensity <laughs> um although then again like the story itself is quite intense i would say um because basically it sort of revolves around these three kids in lockwood and co george lucy and lockwood they, they go to some routine clean up in a house to like get rid of a ghost and then they find a ghost of a, a murder victim whose body was like bricked up inside of a chimney and she is <laughs> angry and yeah she was in a relationship with a man who like harmed her and then murdered her so like it's quite intense <laughs> in my opinion and I think the show does the intensity maybe a bit better maybe kind of understands some of the stakes a bit more but then the the book the book overall is better even if it doesn't necessarily take it as seriously as I would like to take because I mean it's really intense like these kids are like finding 
the murderer of a woman who was murdered by her lover. Like, that's really, that's really intense. At least I think. Did he tell you anything about that book? Um, I would say, yeah, generally it's all right. There's like a couple times where like Lockwood, who's the leader of the agency, he like um has, he lives in his like big parents' home. He's like a rich twat. Um, <laughs> and his parents collected things from all over the world and they like described them and stuff. And it's all very like, um orientalist um language around that and like sort of weird that they've kept all of these objects which are not part of their culture or history and uh, yeah th that's sometimes mentioned yeah and one thing the film does at least so far is cast people of color in it whereas i don't think i don't think that there are many people of color in the in the book and george who's one of the three of the agency in the book he's fat and Lucy hates him and like you know th th there's obvious fat phobia like the way that his body is described and the way that his like just very being is described is like oh so he's so disgusting like which wasn't very nice but he also still does have like a personality outside of that and he does like he does get to be a main character to some degree or at least like a important secondary character still so you know that was all right I guess but it wasn't very nice whereas yeah like the um, miniseries has cast him as a person of colour but he, he's not fat in the in the series which I think is a shame he should be fat still but we should just get not fat phobia <laughs> kids books and fat phobia is really just it's so deep it's not great so anyway sorry I keep getting distracted by how great I think this looks like all of the colours <laughs> Okay, anyway, okay, um, let me know if you've read any of the books that I mentioned. I think I will be reading the second in the Lockwood and Co series and like I'll watch the rest of the series now too. So maybe I'll do that next month or this month. Yeah, I guess like I would definitely, out of everything, I would definitely recommend Lost in Work. And then if you like Discworld, I would recommend reading that. Cool, I think that is everything finally now to discuss. Yeah, I hope you have a nice day when you're watching this and I will talk to you when I next talk to you. Bye.